Today I'm going to show you how to make fingerless gloves in a small adult size using the heart card that we already punched and have made several projects with. If you haven't already punched one, here's the movie that you need to watch to make one for yourself. I have quite a few glove and mitten patterns in the Warm Hands workbook and the written version of these heart gloves with three sizes that fit big girls to adults and three gauges is now part of the Warm Hands workbook. So you'll download two files when and if you buy the book. And those who have already bought it are getting Ravelry notices, allowing them to download the new file so that their books will be upgraded too. In case the book interests you, there is a link in the program notes that will allow you to go look at it and purchase it if you decide it's something that you need. This project requires number one yarn and that you adjust your standard gauge knitting machine to get seven stitches, 10 rows per inch. What I'm knitting with today are odds and ends of sock yarn and odds and ends of plain number one yarn. If you need to go shopping for yarn locally, these are the two I recommend because I know they can get the gauge and that our standard gauge knitting machines like working with them just fine. Here are the finished dimensions of the three sizes that are given in the written pattern. Today we're knitting the smallest of them. If you want to tweak the length, the easiest way is to add or subtract rows right here. For circumference, you would vary the stitch count. Most of the glove will be knitted on stockinette settings. For the main stitch size, use what it takes to get the gauge. For me, that was seven, but I knitted the entirety of both hems at six so that the wrist and the fingertip area would hug tightly. It's a judgment call based on who will wear the gloves, whether you want to use main stitch size or a reduced stitch size for the cuffs. Begin with your card locked on the first patterning row. For this project, I knitted both of my hearts facing the same direction. So I began with the one stitch point at the bottom of the heart. You may do that, or you may put them the opposite direction or as mirror images. If you start with the heart point at the bottom, when you lock your Stinger Studio Silver Reed machine on the first patterning row, this is what the feelers will look like. You'll see what it looks like on a brother machine in a moment. For now, let's just begin by e-wrapping 52 needles. At main stitch size, minus one, knit 24 rows. For brothers, after knitting row 23, set the carriage for KC, and here's what it looks like when we're locked on the first patterning row. The stitches will be selected when we knit row 24, and now we can head straight into Fair Isle settings, whatever machine we're using. So add a little bit of weight, set your card to advance, add color two to feeder two. On Brothers, use that center main button. On Singer Studios and Silver Reeds, it's basically just adding the yarn and turning to um, Fair Isle settings. It may also read Knit In rather than Fair Isle on some models. Knit the six Fair Isle rows. They're all done now. Now I'm just going to turn my card back six rows and it'll be locked yet again on the first row. If you wanted to change the direction of the hearts, you couldn't do that. You would have to turn the card upside down and locate the first row. Returning to stockinette settings. Now knit six more rows to complete the hem. Now I left KC on so that I could double check that I was indeed on the heart. I am, I can turn it off and those rows will be plain because I was set on stockinette settings in spite of KC being in operation. Now hang the e-wraps to complete the hem. Doesn't matter if you use a tool or your fingertips, just get them all hung. And if you prefer to hang every other one, that will be okay for this project. Turn up the stitch dial to main stitch size. Knit 10 plain rows. Use one contrasting piece of yarn on each side of the work. Hang it on the end needle and mark that needle with that yarn. It'll pull out easily later and this will mark the position 
in which we'll knit our thumb opening. Knit 14 rows and hang a second set of yarn markers. Now 20 more plain rows and it'll be time to knit the second hem. Bring the needles forward and using a piece of yarn that doesn't quite match the main yarn, e-wrap either all of the needles or every other needle. I find every other needle adequate for this particular project. Turn down the stitch size if you're doing that, and I am. Knit six plain rows. And if using a brother, turn on KC after the fifth of those rows so that your needles will select. Eek! I'm not using the clamps and my machine slipped, but I recovered. Change to Fair Isle settings, add color two, and knit your six heart rows. We're done with Fair Isle for this project, so remove color two, set it aside, return to stock and knit settings, and knit 18 plain rows. Here's why we made those recent e-wraps in a color that wasn't quite a match because they're really easy to hang now to close the second hem. Since I only e-wrapped every other needle, I am hanging on every other needle. If you e-wrapped every single needle, obviously use them all. The reason I chose to do every other one is it makes this part of the hem a little less stiff and our fingers have to go through it. And now bind off around the gate pegs or using any other method you like that will stretch enough to allow your fingertips to work into the glove. Hung hems never quite look their best until we have pulled them firmly lengthwise. So here I'm going to insert one of my selector combs inside the hem, give it a sharp lengthwise tug, and that will set the stitches. This is true of all hung hems, that they look better after this treatment it's especially true when there's fair isle involved. Okay, let's take a look at my sample. I changed yarns partway through using up odds and ends, so I have Franken gloves. Here's the first hem, that will be the wrist end. The yarn markers that we hung are hiding on these edges under the curl. So what we need to do is seam the two layers of this hem separately. Then seam these two edges together up to the first set of yarn markers. That will close the wrist, the bottom part of the hand, and then we can knit on the thumb. An entire column of stitches has been allowed on each side for you to use for seaming, and I recommend mattress stitch. A stitch around the final point in the seam where the yarn markers are securely and not the yarn before weaving it in because we're about to put that area under a little bit of stress. We're opening out the area and hanging the center of the seam on a needle right there. That will become the center of what we're about to do. Now 11 more stitches hung to either side. So in all, there will be 23 needles in work. It can help to put a little bit of weight on the knitting here I'm using a comb that belongs to an HK100, which is not only a nice little bit of weight, it also allows me to secure the yarn tails. We'll knit 16 rows in all for the thumb, and you can make a judgment call here concerning whether to tighten the row count partway through for what will be the end of the thumb piece or not. I did tighten it and then loosen it again to main stitch size so that my edge is tighter than the base of the thumb. Now we'll hang the same area that was hung previously, make sure all the yarn markers are removed, and bind off. Now seam the marked areas. Again, everywhere there are two layers, those layers should be seamed separately. Weave in any yarn tails that remain. Most of them will be near a hem and they can just be put inside the hem. Now here are some other projects that we've done with the heart card. There is a movie on each one of them, and I hope you will look them up and enjoy those too. And I didn't forget those of you who work with very basic machines. This movie will show you how to get the heart pattern with your machine.